As mentioned in our news story, Patricia Belil announced yesterday that she'll be stepping down as the city's longest serving mayor at the end of October. This after the Democratic Alliance had agreed to drop charges against her and with Delil saying she feels vindicated. But what does this actually mean politically? Are the DA setting a precedent that they can simply drop charges without any explanation to the public or other parties? Well, joining us now to talk a little bit more about this and get us uh, their reaction from this resignation, uh, Cape Town's ANC caucus leader, Golani Sotashe, joins us in our parliamentary studios. Thank you so much for joining us. Golani, welcome to Morning Live. Uh, good morning, uh, Leanne and uh, Sakina, and also to the viewers of SABC. Let's begin by getting your reaction to the announcement from yesterday. Well, uh, Leanne, we expected this. Uh, we've been putting a lot of pressure in the city of Cape Town as an official opposition. This issue has got nothing to do about Delil. We've been maintaining that. This issue has got everything to do with covering up the corruption that is in the city of Cape Town. As we are speaking now, there is an investigation that is going on, um, it's sanctioned by the administration because we pressed that all the allegations leveled against Delil and other senior members of council must be investigated. I mean, you'll, you'll recall that uh, the municipal manager resigned, the one of the officials is on the suspension. The issue of the desalination plants in the city of Cape Town is the issue. The issue of the electric buses in the city of Cape Town is the issue because billions of rent have been squandered and then we want to know the truth. Mm. So mm. I think uh, Moose has got an egg in his face. He can't explain anymore. He's running out of ideas to justify the maladministration and also the corruption that is taking place in the city of Cape Town. Yeah. So we, 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 we expected this, that they will put pressure on Delil. Whether there is a deal or not, we reacted on their statement that there is a deal. Delil is denying that. But it's for Delil to explain to the member, I mean, to members of the public whether she did sign the agreement or not. Yeah. But we are saying as the ANC, we want all the allegations to be probed in that administration so that people of Cape Town can know exactly where their money went to. Yeah. I mean, can anybody open these charges? Can anyone go for them? I mean, what are your rights? Are you able to open up these charges and say, no, listen, this is unacceptable. Um, this is the city of Cape Town. The people deserve to know. We are going to try and uh, reopen this, or it's unacceptable that it's not. These charges are just being dropped without anybody knowing about them. What is your role in all of this? Well, look, the DA, I think they were trying to save their uh, uh, image from, you know, from being... Uh, um, questioned by the public because they are actually, they were going to be embarrassed more because they've been saying that Delil, you, you recall uh, Natasha Mazzoni has been coming out clear on this issue, concluded that Delil is, she can't be trusted, um, I mean she's corrupt and all that kind of stuff. The question is, Musi must tell us whether Mazzoni was misleading the public. What went wrong? Why there is such a U10, I mean a huge U10? Our, 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 our view as ANC is that I think the DA is getting pressure from their funders. They can't kick off their campaign. This issue of Delil is holding them back. So they are trying by all means to get this thing off so that they can be able to kickstart their, 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 their campaign. But the reality is that people must see the DA what it is. And uh, we have managed as a caucus of, the, of, of Cape Town to expose the shenanigans within the administration. Mm. Let's, let's look at what you believe is behind all of this. I mean, you, you've obviously looked at what the, the DA alleges that DeLil did. Um, they're saying that there's obviously charges and allegations of nepotism and corruption against the mayor. Do you have any other details that perhaps you're party to? What we have, at, uh, Eliad, is the fact that, one, there, 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 is a, there is a tender that went out in 2014, which we, we, we took up as ANC to say we want an explanation from the administration, from the leadership of that administration. The mayor made an announcement in council that the city of Cape Town will pilot the electric buses. We were told that electric buses were delivered. At the end of the day, we have never seen the electric buses. Millions of rent were spent. And uh, a particular company from China was given preference. Still to date, we don't know where are the electric buses. And the report that went to Auditor General was that 
all the buses were completed, they met the standards and so forth. So when we picked up that there is corruption that is going on, we alerted the office of the Auditor General to investigate this issue. And um, subsequent to that, the Auditor General came back to say, well, uh, the city of Cape Town must be able to answer us on these issues of uh, electric buses. Mm. You will recall also, uh, Lien, on the issue of the security upgrades on mayor's uh, private residence. We took up that matter as ANC, and the DA denied that uh, taxpayers' money were used to upgrade the, the private residence of the mayor. So we opened up the case in the city, I mean, Central Police Station, and also approached the Office of Public Protector. So mm -hmm. the matter is still ongoing. We are going to get a feedback from Public Protector on the 17th. So, so the suppose, point is... So yes. you have got, I mean, there, there are a number of issues that you have you've raised the alarm bells you've spoken about them and you've also had big concerns about um the alleged corruption and perhaps corruption under the administration of of the mayor patricia de Lille. however when it came to a vote of no confidence against her in february you guys saved her you said not are we voting for the mayor why why would you do something like that well uh, we are very clear uh, lien Ours was not personal. We've been maintaining that. It was not about the Delil. All we did, the reason why we wanted Delil not to go, we wanted Delil to state her side of the story. She must tell us everything, what is going on in the administration. We know that the reason why they don't want to have this public hearing, this open public hearing on her case, Delil is going to say things that are uncomfortable. So the, she's going to say things that is those things are going to actually um, embarrass the DA. So, so I think Musi is trying hard, is getting instruction from the old white boys to really deal with this issue, put it aside, kick off the, the, the campaign. So, so, so our reasoning uh, behind saving Delhi was to make sure that we get to the bottom of all these issues in the city of Cape Town because Delhi is the mayor of Cape Town. Mm. So if we vote her out, Nobody's going to tell us exactly what's going on because this whole issue is about covering up corruption that is taking place in the city of Cape Town. Musi is acting as a pseudo mayor of Cape Town. The issue of day zero is Musi who came up with the issue of day zero. There was never such a thing. It's a main, main thing. It's a kind of a money scheme. And uh, it's the same Musi who told us now that there is no day zero. Yeah. So you can't believe the leader of the DA anymore. Are you going to be approaching Patricia the Little as a party? Perhaps bring her on board? She comes with a lot of support as well from, from the, the Cape Town residents, and you are desperate to take the province. Well, uh, the, the, the leader, I mean, the, the head of elections, uh, Comrade uh, Balula, made this point that the ANC is open to everyone. Uh, we are not going to treat the little special. All we are doing our, uh, here in Cape Town, we are actually... Uh, cleaning our houses, ANC. We are working hard to regain the trust of our people. We acknowledge our mistakes in the past. We are saying to people of Cape Town, do, do the right thing. I mean, you can't uh, allow the DA to continue to abuse you because you do not have an alternative. So they must give us a second chance to, to, to run this province. They must give us a second chance to take over the city of Cape Town in 2021. But I can tell you right now, the DAI, in our view, has reached the ceiling. They don't know. They don't. They don't have any place to hide now. They are. They are shenanigans are out there to be seen. Yeah. Some people, however, and, and I understand where you're coming from, but a lot of people are supporting this move and saying, "Great, you know, um, uh, she's uh, there is there are allegations of corruption. The DA are trying to ensure that they root out all corruption in the city and they get in there and they run this properly, as opposed to let's just use the ANC in his example that they'll leave people in positions for such a long time that eventually an entire province or city falls apart before we see any action." being taken. So in a way, there are people on the other side of the coin that are commending this move. There is no such, Lien. And uh, here in Cape Town, I do not know why SAPC did not run that interview. In fact, a member of the DA, I mean a former member of the DA by the name of Rodney Lenton, came up with a damning information that he was approached by a group of Israel companies. Uh, saying that, uh, look, they want to win the tender in the city of Cape Town for desalination plants, and they will give the DA 600 million in return for their election campaign for next year. Why the SAPC did not run that, I do not know. The guy gave the, 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 the interview, and he said that he's prepared to come out 
and talk about this issue. So, so, so these are the issues that people do not know. They are councillors of the DA in the city of Cape Town who are deeply involved in corruption, stealing money, selling houses, and they are taken to DC. Guess what? They are not uh, given any sanction. So, so you've got a party that is playing a serious double standard. So I do not believe that uh, people now are still having a view that the DA is running a clean governance in the city of Cape Town. Anyway, there was no such. Yeah. I mean, even uh, Ipsos uh, results have confirmed that the DA is dropping uh, seriously in the Western Cape in terms of the support. DA is losing municipalities left and right. I'm, I mean, left, center, and right. Look at the, what is happening in Matsikama. They've just lost. Their own councillors voted against their own mayor. So you look what is happening in, in, in Naisna. So you, you can see the mood in the Western Cape has changed completely. So we're working hard as African National Congress to regain that trust of people of Western Cape. All right, we leave it there. Thank you very, very much for talking to us. Uh, Cape Town's ANC caucus leader, Kolani Sotashe, talking to us about the resignation uh, and the deal that has been struck between the DA and Patricia Delil. She's set to leave office and resign on the 31st of October. New mayor will be appointed, and uh, the DA is saying that they will drop all of the internal investigations against the mayor, but that's internally. Anything happening external still stands. Now, just uh, again, uh, for what Golani did say, uh, Rodney Lenton, this gentleman who's making these allegations, we've invited him to Morning Live, unfortunately, uh, to the SABC, in fact, and he's declined an interview. So we have tried, but unfortunately, he will not talk to us. Let's take a break. Zim